Hey, what's up? Jason here with Unity3D.College. Yesterday I got a really good question about how to select things with a set of buttons and then act on them with another set of buttons. So imagine here I've got a little system where I can select a wizard or a warrior and I can assign a weapon to those. Now I'm going to enable these characters and show you how it works and then I'll show you um, the, the inner workings, how to set something up like this yourself. It's pretty simple though. So I've got these characters here. I'm going to select, um, let's select the wizard and give him a staff. I may also switch him to a sword, go to the warrior, and um, I'm gonna give him a staff. So it's kinda opposite of what you'd expect. And then I can go back and forth and you see that they keep the thing that's selected for them. And I could switch them. And this could be any number of selectable items and any number of selectable um, weapons. And this could also apply to you know, rooms in an app or um, add-ons in a spaceship. A any kind of thing where you're selecting something and then just applying from another button based off of that. So how did I set this up? It's actually really, really simple. Uh, what we have here first is just a selection of two characters. So I've got these uh, two orcs here from this pack um, right there. And uh, each one of these has a character script on it that just references where the hand is. So if you look here, this character script has a serialized private field for the transform of the right hand. We don't want to access this outside the class, so it's private but we do need to set it in the inspector so the serialized field attributes there. Then we also have a private reference to the current weapon. Right now we're just using a game object because these weapons don't do anything. It's just a model here. And um, we have a public method on line 10 called equip weapon where we pass in a prefab. If we already have a weapon equipped, we destroy it. Otherwise, we uh, instantiate the weapon from the prefab and set the transform parent to the right hand. So this is why it's automatically placed right where we want it. So that shows kind of how we do the uh, the weapon selection, right? But it's not really tying it all together because how do you know which character to put it on? Well, that's all done. Well, first let's look at the buttons. Let's let's go through this. So we've got two panels here in the UI. We have two character select buttons, and then we have a weapon panel. This is the one on the right with two weapon select buttons. Now these buttons. Let's look at the first button. It's got an on-click handler calling into this character selection controller and it's the select character method on there. And what we're doing is passing in the orc wizard. So the character selection controller, if I just click on this, you'll see it kind of light up, is this object right here. It's just a game object with the script and the two characters assigned in an array. Uh, the reference to this orc wizard is actually just a reference to this child here of these two characters. So you're gonna have the two characters there. We toggle which one's visible based off of which one's selected. So let's take a look at this actual select character method and see what's happening. You'll be surprised, it's really, really simple. So here, the character selection controller, the select character method, again, we pass in a character to select. We set the selected character which actually right now it's public, it probably doesn't need to be. I was thinking about going about this a different way. This could just be a private field instead of a public uh, character or public property character of the character. But anyway, we select it, we set it selected, and then we just loop through all the existing ones and then set the um, active state of their game object to true or false based off on whether or not it's the character that we've selected. So each character in here that's not the selected one will get set to false, not active. The one that is selected will be enabled. And then again, here's our equip current character method. So this, this is what we're gonna call from those other buttons. And this just looks at the selected character and calls that equip weapon, puts the weapon on them, and we're done. So this is kind of everything that we need to build a little system like this. Now it doesn't persist the data, and it doesn't necessarily set data on there. Uh, another way, if you're doing this in a bigger project where you actually need to kind of save this stuff off, you probably wanna set some sort of a, uh, a flag and enumeration or the the name of the weapon even an id of the weapon so that way you could restore it from persistence later when you, you know restart the app or restart the game you want to save that stuff off somewhere but right now we're just kind of bypassing that to just show how these buttons work so again on the buttons let's look at the button so i want to look at character select button one more time so you see here just calling in and it calls it passes in the orc warrior so that gets selected or i click this one and we pass in the orc wizard and then on the weapon selection, we just call the character selection controller equip current character. And here we pass in the prefab ah, prefab reference to the uh, the weapon. So I pass in the sword or the wand based on which button you click. So it's kind of how this 
system works. Again, it's a really basic example. Um, in a bigger project, you probably want to have a slightly more complicated system. You know, split some of these things out into multiple classes and you know, have your weapon do some logic, maybe save the stuff off. But if you just need to be able to select one set of things and then act on them you know, with another set of buttons on the right, this is essentially how you do it. You make the, the left side or whatever the selection side is, just select something in a class that you can access with the other one and then update and modify from there. So again, like that, like we set the uh, selected character and then we modify the selected character. And also important to note, one thing to do in here in this code right at the start is select the first character. So that way there's a selected character always. Otherwise, if we started clicking equip current character, we're just gonna blow up here with no character selected, get a no reference exception, and no, that's no fun. Uh, anyway, if you have questions you know, like this or more simple, more complicated, um, you know, not UI related, whatever it is, uh, feel free to just drop them in the comments below or uh, jump over to the Facebook group and ask away. And try to look there regularly and just kind of answer whatever questions pop up. Um, and if you like the videos, of course, uh, like, subscribe and all that fun stuff. All right. Thanks for watching.